So guys, the other day I was, I was in this mood. I was listening to Mahler's first symphony, which I love. It was raining and there's this part in the third movement that always gives me just the biggest feelings of nostalgia. And I suddenly realized that that particular passage is the equivalent in classical music to what we know as lo-fi. And so because it's still raining after many days and January went by so quickly and I don't know what time is anymore, let's dive deep into lo-fi in connection with nostalgia and how this is portrayed so wonderfully in that particular movement. So lo-fi stands for low fidelity and it was something that apparently according to Wikipedia started in the 1990s when people started making music in their own homes but today lo-fi is related to that feeling of having this sort of chill music in the background while you do something else it has that quality of just bad definition sounds or beats, even sounds that seem to leak from another room. So there's this video from Jaime Altozano that I will link below because he really dives deep into how this lo-fi really connects with especially our generation because it takes us back to our childhood, to the sounds that the Game Boy used to make, to that old technology, to the Walkman, Disman, whatever it is. It takes us back to, to those feelings and it gives us a really big sense of feeling of nostalgia. And there are even lo-fis that take this sound from the 90s from video games and make a track out of it. Or the track might be around a soundbite from a Simpsons episode that you probably watched on TV on Sundays at 5 p.m. when you were a kid. And there's even a type of lo-fi that Jaime refers to ultra lo-fi where it really takes you to a very sort of special spatial feeling that you are in a place and you hear music coming from somewhere else. So it's either the cartoons are playing in some other room or this really popular one where Mr. Brightside is playing in the dance floor but you are alone in the bathroom which we all remember that feeling. And so part of this lo-fi really encapsulates those feelings of nostalgia. Now you might be saying what does all of this have to do with Gustav Mahler's first symphony and specifically the third movement and perhaps you argue nothing but hear me out. So in a nutshell Mahler is a very very famous composer. He composed a lot of symphonies and songs. He's sitting right there. Um, he was very known in his time as a conductor in the Vienna court opera but he was not from Vienna, he was, he grew up originally in this tiny, tiny place called Iglau, which was in the section that was called as Bohemia back then. It's very uh, hard to say it now because it used to be a whole empire that doesn't exist anymore, but it's kind of where near Prague. The movement that I want to talk about is the third movement of Mahler's first symphony. So I'm going to play you how the movement begins. So as you can maybe tell, this has the vibe of a funeral march, right? It's, it's quite gloomy, also very minimalistic. It's also only timpanis, one bass player in what is otherwise a humongous uh, orchestra. But that melody is also a rework of a kid's song, I think known in English as Brother John or Frère Jacques, uh, which sounds like this. Frère Jacques, Frère So that hits us with the first sort of taste of hearing something that is from a, a child's past, if you will, but has this really, really dark and sad tones. So this sad, gloomy child melody develops and develops and develops. And then we move to another section where we have some new material and all of a sudden we are hit with this. And this is 
the part that always breaks me because you get this feeling like you're moving along with your feelings and you're hit by this music that sounds like it's coming from somewhere else, which is a, like a band passing by on the outside and you're here listening to it and you don't know if you're actually listening to that or if that's a memory that's attacking you. But I think the reason why it, it, it has this effect is because Mahler has many times said that his first connection to music was when he was a little kid and he would hear the local band marching through in his house in that little town in Iglau and that he would run to them and make music with them with an accordion that he had, which was also his first instrument. And so I think that those early memories of, of band music are exactly this and that's why it's lo-fi it's like you are listening to your to the cartoons that you grew up with from another room and even i'm gonna get a bit nerdy here it'll last like 30 seconds i promise but in the score there's an indication about the percussion in that moment as you can hear there's like a band like drum and cymbal that plays. Now, there are a lot of percussionists that could be playing that separately, like one person plays a drum and the other one plays a cymbal. But Mahler says specifically that he wants that to be played by one person, meaning exactly how it would be if you were in a marching band in a little town. He wants it to sound a bit more lo-fi. And interestingly enough, this movement out of the whole symphony, which was Mahler's first, you know, here's my symphony, was the one that was received the worst. People did not understand what that child song had to do there, why it was a funeral march, what this band thing, why it was there. And I guess for final reflection, I was watching the other day a video by Two Set Violin. Hi to all Two Set fans. I know I have some amongst my subscribers. And they were talking about Mahler and about Mahler being fancy. And this is not what I'm making this video. Okay, I love Mahler. I read that book. It's 700 pages. I'm devoted. But anyways, they were talking about Mahler. And I think Brett was saying that he really struggled at the beginning when he was younger to like Mahler or to get Mahler. And as he grew older, it's like it hit him like, oh, this is amazing. And I had the same experience. As I grew older, it's sort of like the music, his music was more deeply and deeply connected with me. And I think it's because of this sense of nostalgia that's in there at, at so many times that you, you don't know what nostalgia is when you're younger because you don't have enough memories of another time, of happy memories of another time to reflect on. And at the same time, there is a quote by Mahler saying that he never wanted to compose something that could be explained with words. And even though I'm sure a lot of composers seek for that, but the fact that he put that in words, that that's what he wanted, totally makes sense with me because I have no feelings about marching bands. I was not, I didn't grow up in a small town with marching bands, but the feelings that are put into that, the way that it seems to come out of nowhere and sort of attack you, I think create feelings. And if I see someone nostalgia, even though I don't have nostalgia for that, it will probably trigger nostalgia in me. I think that it, feelings see feelings, if you know what I mean. She doesn't even go here. Do you even go to this school? No, I just have a lot of feelings. So anyways, I hope that this video perhaps encouraged you to have a listen at that movement. That's great. But also showed you how a lot of the stuff that we make is always the same. I mean, we call it lo-fi today and we might have called it whatever people called it back then to what Mahler did. but nostalgia, um, you know, reminiscent, all of these feelings that we put into our art um, are with us, are with us humans. And so I think that it's really cool to throw lines between this stuff because otherwise we get too stuck thinking which this music's good and this time was good and this time was bad. And mm, we're just humans going through all of these feelings and figuring out life over and over again and Mahler dealt with nostalgia that way and we're dealing it with lo-fi today. <laughs> so that's the video for today. Uh, like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe and I will see you next time.